still here too, Glenn. Okay, now we started recording, and then I would like to show uh, my PowerPoint today. I hope you can see my PowerPoint. Uh, my title today is Living in the White Path. Okay, so uh, let's get started. And then I briefly explain the subject about, you know, 30 minutes or so, and then we'll open up the discussion. You're free to talk and then share your thought. Okay? So, um, let's see. As you know, um, there are many, many parables uh, in that Buddhist sutras. So, for example, the very famous parable is burning house and three children. Maybe some of you already knew this. This one uh, uh, came out in the Lotus Sutra. So, um, the, the story goes like that. You can see the picture here. I like this picture. <laughs> Look at that. A eh? um, there are uh, supposed to be three children and <laughs> four. <laughs> Maybe some, you know, three boys invited one, you know, the friend neighborhood. I don't know, but anyway, um, this is sort of like a. This man is a father. Father, father is kind of a rich man in the village, and then he had some kind of business, and he had a three sons and then one day he has to leave the house and say go to the town so he told the father said oh boy my boys you have to be behave yourself and then don't have a you I'm know. listening to the zoom, zoom yeah. OPD, discussion mm -hmm. so uh could you mute can you mute please okay so uh the story goes like so the father left home and go to the town. So three kids are playing at home. I don't know what they're doing. So, but however, somehow uh, the house where the two, three children living got fired. So when his father came back from the town to the village, he found out, oh my goodness, my house is on fire. So the, all the villagers said, oh, we have to, we have a big trouble. Your, your house is on fire. You know what? I have three kids there. We have to rescue them. That's how it goes. So the father said, oh, what should I do? You know, call my kids. Please get out. You don't know, but you are in the fire. You have a big trouble. Get out. But all the three children don't care, don't hear the father's voice. They just keep playing and jumping around and chasing each other. So my, you know, if the father came up, you know, idea, okay. So I have an idea. I will tell my kids, I got three vehicles. Sort of like a vehicle, like a, some kind of bicycle, the bikes, or maybe the cars. So he goes like, well, my children, you know what? You have to get out. I got a, a goat coat, goat car, goat. Number one is goat. And then deer car. And then I got ox card. You like it. Get out of the house. Take a look at it. So finally, three children listen to their father's voice. Oh, my father got souvenir for us, gift for us. So they got out of the house. And then, where is the house? Where is the car? Actually, there are no three cars. There is a white bollocks car outside. That's how the story goes. So what it means, there is a lot of elements, right? So uh, goat car, deer car, ox car, those are like early Buddhist um, lessons. Sort of like a uh, goat car can be a shravaka. Uh, there is some, you know, uh, Theravada Buddhism has a, uh, a certain bodhisattva ranks. So shravaka, uh, you know, route or maybe a Platyaka um, Buddha. And then also last one is a uh, Bodhisattva route. So those are three 
different way to get enlightened or to receive a Buddhahood. But however, instead of three different vehicles, uh, Lotus Sutra always say there is one uh, ekayana. If everybody get into the same car, which is you can get on white bullock's car. So there is no difference between Shravaka and Pratyaka Buddha or um, uh, Bodhisattva route. That's the way the story is. So that's a burning house. It's a burning house, but that means this world. Uh, burning house, like a Saha world, where all the human beings are living. The human world is Saha. Um, samsara, Saha, comes from a Sanskrit, Saha world. It will become Samsara world. That's the famous Lotus Sutra story. And then also, another, uh, I'm sure you know about the fable of Aesop. Aesop. It's the, the hare and the tortoise, right? I don't have to explain this, but Aesop's story, very famous. Fabo tells a story of the tortoise who was ridiculed by the hare for being slow. Turtle, he was so slow that the turtle wanted to challenge it. And then he took a race with hare. And the hare soon leaves the tortoise in behind. And then he was very confident of winning because he's jumping around and goes fast. But he took a nap, didn't he? So when he woke up, he realized, oh, my competitor, a tortoise, crawling slowly but steadily, it has already arrived before the hare. But the story went, right? So what it means to you? We learned a lesson from them. So those are the fables. So today, I want to share the famous fable. It, the title is The Two Rivers in White Path. Two Rivers in White Path. So you see this, I will explain later, but that's how the picture goes. Two rivers is, two, one river is a river of fire, another one river of icy water, and then traveler here, is try to go from east side to west side. That's how the story goes. This is another famous uh, fable <laughs> uh, by Shantao. Shanta. So before getting to this uh, two river and white path, let me explain the author, um, Shantao. Shantao or Zendo uh, was a, one of the Shinran's seven masters, Piyodan masters. He is number five, Chinese master. Shantao, in other words, Zendo, was born in China way back to 613 and 681. So he was born in uh, Dongshan uh, province, Dongshan province in China during the Sui dynasty and Tang Dynasty. I will show you the map after this. And then at that time in China, particularly the Contemplation Sutra, you know, the one of the three Pure Land Sutra, Larger Sutra, Contemplation Sutra, and then Amida Sutra. There are three Pure Land Sutras, Mahayana Buddhism. But the Contemplation Sutra was very popular in China. So, uh, Shanta was reading the Contemplation Sutra deeply, and then he worked on the commentary, how to understand, an uh, explanation book, you know, commentary about the Contemplation Sutra. And then Shanta met the Tao Cho uh, at a uh, Xuanzong temple. Xuanzong temple is a very famous, a still now, tourist spot in China. So uh, uh, Tao Cho actually was a Shantao's teacher. So Shantao was able to see in person Tao Cho at that time. 
So this is a、um, Chantal,、uh, how look, he looked like. People say that Chantal was such a diligent monk and he always practiced every day, day and night. And he never looked up the woman at all. So all the time he stayed in a monastery and then day and night and doing the meditation and samadhi practice and then reading the sutra and writing the contemplation sutra、uh, commentaries. That's how the, the way the Shantou lived his life. And talking about his time in China,、uh, when he was born 613, at that time is a Sui dynasty was in China. Sui is another word, Zui. As you can see, the green area, this is a, actually a Sui dynasty territory. It's right here. And be,、uh, above here is different tribe. Uh, this is Japan, this is Korea, South Korea, North Korea, kind of thing. Those are like a, a different, you know, from that、um, uh, east, east area. And then、um, toward the end of、um, this one is Tang Dynasty. It's B- Zui Dynasty was took,、uh, taken over by Tang Dynasty. Tang is Tō, Tō Dynasty. See, the China got really expanded. Somehow the Tang Dynasty attacked those,、uh, you know, that、um, sort of,、uh, you know, different, uh, uh, you know,、uh, tribes. And then he,、uh, Tou Dynasty, Tang Dynasty,、uh, expanded the territories. So,、uh, Shanto was lucky, very lucky compared to his father, Tao Chou. Tao Chou time before the Shanto, China was sort of get rid of that Buddhism. So, Tao Chou had such a difficult time to keep studying Buddhism and then practice. But however, the, Shan,、uh, the Shantao's time is emperor in Sui and Taigu dynasty,、uh, very much、um, accepted the Buddhism. And then,、uh, sort of, they use a you know, Buddhist lesson in their uh, political uh, area too. So,、uh, Shantao was protected. By that、uh, Sui and Tang dynasty, and then also by emperor, and he was able to pursue the Buddhist practice and study as well. So he was lucky in China. So when you remember the Shoshinge,、uh, Shoshinge, when the Zendo time comes, all of a sudden it, it becomes like a we China, a little higher, right? Zendo dokumyo bushoi, right? It's higher. So the, she runs sort of like a, gave a higher mark or respected at Zendo very much.、Yeah? So this is a Zendo part. Okay? And then Zendo,、uh, Shanto, another word. Shanto wrote a lot of books, a lot of books. Uh, we call it the, the bottom is above. Those are the commentaries he made, and also he wrote a book. And then, commentary on the Contemplation Sutra, I just remember,、uh, mentioned it. There are four fascicles, four sort of like a big versions. And then, contemplation and then recitation, this one fascicle. And then, praise of Dharma practice, two. Fascicles and then praise the right of rebirth as one fascicle and then praise of Pratupana. Pratupana is、um, the so the Hanju Zan Mai Kyo, another word, is just a Buddhist practitioner、uh, after the meditation many times, day and night, finally they can see. Uh, the Buddha in front of 
of you. So the Buddha is coming out in front of you. That's a samadhi. So that's how we do it. This is how we do it. This is explanation and pray, pray, uh, praise of Pratipana. This is in the presence of the Buddha, right? The present uh, the Buddha is, you know, it's a meditation. It's sort of like a uh, visualizing the Buddha. Shakyamuni, Amida Buddha, any kind of Buddha. There are some 32 major characteristics and then more detailed characteristics. The practices has to remember it, how the Buddha looks like from the top of the head to the bottom, to the feet. So they just all the meditating. And then finally, someday, the Buddha showed up in front of you. That's what the presence of the Buddha means, right? So those are the five in, I introduced. The above is called five categories. So when you count one, two, three, four, five categories. How many fascicle? Four, one, two, one, one. So when you, you know, add all of them, there's a nine fascicle. We call it five categories and nine fascicles. All right, so this is the Chantal's in major uh, books uh, they worked, he worked on. And then this is Chantal's grave site in China. Uh, someday, hope we can travel around the world. <laughs> so there's a very famous, uh, this is a tower, and then in there is, there is a grave site. Still there, people go there, and very uh, popular. Uh, tourist partner. So, with saying that, that the Shantao's life and Shantao's works. Now, let's go back to to reverse and white path. Okay, because I like this story. Very, you know, all elements and symbols. I'll explain to you and you can think about it. So, this is our OCBC, Onaijin. You see the ministers and ministers assistant and work on this place, right? And then if you see, this is Onaijin, sometimes Naijin, it's representing the Amidas, Buddhas, pure land, all brilliant, you know, bright. Bright means uh, representing Amida's immeasurable wisdom and compassion. Wisdom and compassion. Wisdom is light. Immeasurable light means they can the light shine us. Shine us. That means Buddha's wisdom comes to me, right? So when you see it, also again is a lot of this center here. Hope you can see this. Uh, photo is the Amida Buddha's statue right here in the shrine, right? And then here on your right side is Sh Shinran Shonin, our Master Shinran Shonin, our founder's uh, portrait here, yeah? right here on the right side, on your right. And left side is Myonyo Shonin. Normally is eighth generation uh, Renyo Shonin is there, but particularly is a um, OCBC. I think Hirata Sensei, the first minister, uh, honor wanted to honor that Myonyo Shonin. That's a, a, a 21st generation descendant from our founder Shimran Shonin, is right here, and then Myonyo uh, sent a first minister, uh, two ministers to Fra San Francisco. That was the beginning of Buddhist churches of America. So uh, the first minister of Orange County Buddhist Church, Hirata Sensei, wants to honor that uh, Myonyo Shonin in our uh, Onaijin. So instead of Renyo Shonin, we have a uh, Myonyo Shonin here. 
So when you think about it, wait a minute. Buddhism came from Shakyamuni, right? Do you see any Shakyamuni's presence in this Onaijin? Hmm. How do you think? There is no statue. Hmm. But you see this one? What is this? This is a scroll. Normally it's there. Okay. Those are the Pure Land Sutra. Three Pure Land Sutras. Raja Sutra, right? Raja Sutra, uh, the Sutra of the Buddha Imageable Life. And then, second one is Contemplation Sutra, that Shanta worked on it. The third one is Amida Sutra. So there are four scrolls. There are four. Why four? Because you said three. But again, it's Raja Sutra, it's long. So there are two scrolls, two volumes. There are two, two larger sutra scroll, and then one contemplation sutra scroll, and one Amida sutra scroll. So there are four scrolls. This is the Shakyamuni. This Pyodan Sutra, three Pyodan Sutra, represents the existence of Shakyamuni. Why? Because when you start reading those Pure Land Sutra, Shakyamuni is the one who tells you all the stories. Shakyamuni is a narrator. So Shakyamuni is right here. In the Shakyamuni's position, it's between you sitting outside of the Onaijin, is Gejin, we call it, congregation area, and then Amida's right here. The Shikyaman is just between you, me, and then Amida. So Shakyamuni, this uh, Pure Land Sutra, inviting us to the teaching of Amida Buddha's teaching. That's how we see in Jodo Shinshu Shin Buddhism Onaijin. So, with saying that, go back to the story. <laughs> okay. So when you can look at this story, and I will explain slowly. Okay, so I, I sort of, um, you see okay? You see the everything that, okay. So I added the name. This is the area is a east, means this world, this shore versus east versus to the west. This area is west. That shore. This shore is this world. And then that shore is a Buddha's realm or land. And then right here is right here is Shakyamuni Buddha and the east side, this world. And then Amida Buddha is a western direction okay and then here is traveler it's a little hard to see but th there is one traveler the you I wanted to think about this is you this is you and this is me you're gonna start traveling from east to west how do you do that okay so the traveler me and you start journeying, okay, from east to west. He's running from this place in direction to the west. Okay. But right here, just he realized it. I want to go to the western side. But he realized, wait, wait a minute, there is a two big rivers icy water to the north side and then the, the river of fire to the south side when you look at it it's so icy ah wow and then the the fire is scorching you know so traveler has to think about it well what should i do and then when you turn around there is sort of like a lion's 
or snakes or a bandit, thieves are following him. Those are the ones. And then sometimes you see some kind of Buddhist scholars, I mean, Buddhist uh, monks there, and different, uh, you know, um, teaching teachers right here. Those are a whole bunch in here. So he thinks, like, what, what should I do? And then he realized one path right here. You see that little bit all the way to this path. Huh. This is, they say, it's 100 steps. 100 steps. So he thinks about it. What should I do? I can't go to jump. I cannot jump into icy water and then maybe swim from the east to west. No way. I'll be frozen to death. I can't jump into the fire water. I'll be burned. Right? Or maybe I can turn around and go back. No, no, no. There is a beast. And then bandits. Bandits that try to steal his purse and money and credit card, everything. So he has to think about it. Three directions are out. So only thing I can do is maybe just believe in this white path. And then I will start going and pursue this white path, little by little. So when he decided to start walking, and he can hear some voice coming from the eastern side. And that's an encouraging voice from someone to the traveler. And then it goes like, oh, traveler, just uh, uh, resolve to follow this path in front of you. You will certainly not encounter the grief or death, but just you stay there where you are, you will be sure you die. So just keep going on the white path. And after that, there is another voice coming from the western side and call the travelers. Oh traveler with mind that is single, with right mindedlessness. Uh, just believe it, right? Come at once. And then this voice said, I will protect you no matter what it is. So don't have any fear and then just believe in on the white path and start coming to the western direction. So, traveler you and me, listen to that encouraging voice from west eastern direction, which is coming from Shakyamuni, and then right after, the voice invitation from Amida Buddha. And don't worry, I will protect you. And then we start walking in the white path. In the meantime, all that different Buddhist school monks and priests, or they are saying, you, you know, you're making a mistake. Don't go over there. Come back. Come back. You are heading to the wrong direction. Come back. That's what they say, right? So, but this traveler, you and me, ignore those voices from that other Buddhist schools and sect. And they keep going, keep going. And then it's when he goes step and step, step and step. And then somehow this white path became a widened, bigger, and he was able to, we are able to reach the western shore and then see a many, many good friends. That's how the story goes. Okay? So, 
That's what I explained today. So, I said is each element of vocabulary has a meaning, explanation. Probably you knew already that the western pen is a burning house that is a Saha world, our, our, our world. And the western bank is a precious land of perfect bliss. And then uh, brigands or uh, bandits and wild beasts like lions or snakes calling with uh, treacherous familiarity and the station beings, six sense organs, right, uh, represented the human six organs. Uh, so like a, I can see, eye, nose, mouth, taste, and hear, and touch, and then feeling. Those are six organs, right? And six forms of consciousness. I can see things, I can hear, someone's voice, touch, I can taste, those are things. And then also five aggregations, go on, right? And then four elements. I just explained all the elements. And then um, no one is to be seen with traveling. Huh? And then two current water, is actually icy water represent a greed and desire. You see, that's one of our three uh, blind passions or poisons, greed and desire. Hmm. And then fire is the mind of anger and hatred, right? So why the anger, angry mind comes, because the thing doesn't go as I wish. Many things don't go as I wish. That's the way the life is. But we have, a, you know, we we'll get it frustrated, and then we, as a result, the thing doesn't go as well. And my desire cannot be accomplished. So I got flustrated, and then the anger came out. How come it doesn't work? Whose fault is that? Blame someone. Those are the things. Those are the, you know, that's how it works. So the greed, as a, as a, as a result, is anger came out. Now everything is we are, we don't have a wisdom. We are living in the deluded world we are um, living in that, um, um, we are not enlightened. We are non-enlightened existence. And then this white path in the middle, uh, four and five inches wide, very short. And one person can barely walk through. That's a pure mind that aspires to the birth. And the pure land is awakened. And the water constantly surges the path, and the flame seamlessly scorch the path. So those are the greed and desire always come to my life, always constantly, right? And so we go to the six realms, and every day, every one hour, I was upset. <laughs> I'm reaching the angry moment, and then sometimes. I desire so much, as a result, I reach that the world of anger in the afternoon. It's always. Huh. So dinner time, is maybe I might reach that realm of hunger, eat a lot. See, it's just like every day, just back and forth, back and forth. We go through the, the six realms all the time. That's how this to reverse a white, uh, white path. What else? What else? Travelers follow the path and advance directly westward. And he hears a voice of someone in Eastern Bank encouraging 
and exhorting him in following the path advances directly western world. That's the voice from Shakyamuni Buddha. Because Shakyamuni Buddha was a human. So human Buddha, right? Human. He was a human and get enlightened while he was alive. So he just always uh, stays here in the human world, always give us a direction. Direction. Yeah. Direction, give us advice through the Pure Land uh, Sutras to the Amidas in teaching. And when the traveler has gone one or two steps, the brigade called him back, right? Like bandits, come back, come back. That's kind of like a attraction. You are heading to the wrong direction, come back. You know, you are our friend and come sort of inviting to a different a teaching. And someone on the western then called him, that was Amida Buddha. Amida Buddha, right? Yes, invitation, invitation. And traveler forthwell reaches the western side. He meets his good friends and then his joy is uh, boundless. That's how it goes, travelers. And then, sort of reverently embracing Shakyamuni's teachings uh, and his exhortation to advance Western world and obeying Amida's call to us with his compassionate heart, that traveler accepted in accord with the mind of two honored ones, that's the Shakyamuni and Amida. After traveler's death, the traveler attained the birth in that land, the Mr. Buddha. How boundless is traveler's joy. That's how it goes. Furthermore, actually the Shinran Shonin uh, introduced this uh, uh, two rivers and white path in his Kyoyo Shinsho. Uh, I, th I think he liked this story. So after that, he explained Gutoku Sho as well too. So white contrasts with black is a white path. And that's what he shouldn't join. The white is a white act selected and adopted the vow, the pure act that is a directing of virtue to us for our going forth. And the color black is sort of black activity of our ignorance and blind passion. The sand dry practice there's a lot more like a very severe practice and of those, of the two vehicles and those are like a, a Theravada Buddhist lessons of human beings and divas. And then path, they call it path, contract with trail. The path is different from trail, that's Shinran says. It is the one real and direct path of primal vow, the supreme gateway to complete nirvana. Trail refer to the bypath of those who have two or three vehicles. As I explained that Lotus Sutra, I said that, that Theravada Buddhist is there are two and three vehicles. Those are the things of the media God, uh, good acts and practices. So path is different from the trail. Path is actually, is the Amida Buddha prepared for us. And then everybody got into and no difference at all. No high and no lows, everybody can try. And four or five inches wide refer to the four elements and the five aggregate uh, that makes of sentient beings. This is a little bit technical. And awakening the pure mind aspiration means to realize a diamond-like true mind. True mind. And since this is an ocean of great Shinjin, true and a real mind directed to us, through the power of primal vow that's coming from Abhinda's deep wish to us, it cannot be defeated, broken, 
ね、defeated or broken。This is likened to diamond。So diamond、why diamond? Diamond is supposed to be a very hard stone。Very hard stone。Diamond like mind is means not defeatable and unbroken。That's the kind of wish, or that's the kind of Amida's vow. We all receive it. Amida's vow is very solid and defeatable, undefeatable, and then not broken. So we hear Amida's invitation and then receive Amida's deep wish, which is very、uh, hard. And unbrokable, which is diamond like true and real mind, which is a shinjin, we call it. We receive it from Amida's side. So we have about 10 minutes or so.、Uh, thank you very much. So,、uh, hearing my story, and let's go back to. Uh, regular view, and then we have about 10 minutes, and you can share、um, any thought about it. And、uh, maybe you can just uh, uh, turn off the recording, and then you can freely.